and inevitable. And so we should be prepared for solar max, not unnecessarily alarmed. But perhaps we take our star, the sun, for granted, imagining that it's always existed and that it will continue forever with little change. But like everything in the universe, the sun had a beginning and will someday end. Let's follow a few billion years in the history of life under our sun in this artist's panoramic depiction. Three billion years ago, the moon was orbiting closer to Earth than now. And tides would have been much more extreme than today. Churning surf mixed minerals and nutrients and the sun's energy in a planetary blender. Life had begun in its very simplest, minutest form, perhaps a billion years earlier, only a few hundred million years after the planet formed. Now Earth's chemicals, along with gases from volcanoes and perhaps molecules from space, began to assemble themselves into larger and larger colonies. Like the cyanobacteria we see building the half-rock, half-living stromatolites we see here. Now life itself began to transform the atmosphere of our planet, adding oxygen to the nitrogen and carbon dioxide that had predominated earlier. The growing supply of oxygen turned bands of iron rust red 1.8 billion years ago. And our planet was well on the way to the world we know today, a place that would eventually give birth to multi-celled organisms who would develop brains that would enable them to understand the sun that warmed their world, the star that originally gave them life. This solar maximum will be the first to be studied by the flotilla of spacecraft of the International Solar Terrestrial Physics Program, ISTP. But as we'll see, these powerful observatories will soon be joined by even more sensitive instruments and revolutionary new detectors. The newest of the current fleet of spacecraft is ACE, jointly operated by NOAA and NASA. Designed to study the physics of the solar wind, it also makes important contributions to space weather forecasts. It was built here at the Advanced Physics Laboratory of Johns Hopkins University. The main thing that gives us is a continuous monitor of what's going on in the solar wind. More importantly, what's coming directly towards us. It sits a million miles in front of the Earth. And in fact, in solar wind terms, that's about an hour away. Occasionally, when we have these big events, the solar wind will go faster. So we maybe have less time. Sometimes it can only be 40 minutes away, which means we have to scramble if we're going to do any sort of protection um, due to the events coming towards us but most of the time it's an hour away. That is an amazing help to us because not only does it give us a warning, but it actually is working 24 hours a day, every day, and we get live feed from that spacecraft at all times through the NOAA Space Environment Center. And as a scientist, it's wonderful because finally we can sit there and see what's coming towards us and not just predict or guess or find out three days later that this is why something's happened. Really, we've made um, tremendous leaps in space weather research in the last couple of years. If you liken it to terrestrial weather, um, we're probably where we were about 30 years ago. Um, obviously, we have a tremendous number of monitoring stations, a lot of spacecraft, ground-based facilities that are constantly looking and telling us what's happening. But what you're really doing is, it's like trying to say what the weather would be like in LA if you only had a weather station in Washington, D.C. So you do the best you can with the tools that you have to hand. Launching in early 2000, in time to study solar max, will be the aptly named Image spacecraft. Up in space, Image will deploy several innovative instruments to study how Earth's inner magnetosphere responds to variations in the flow of charged particles from the sun. Image is designed to be launched at solar maximum. Launched to see, for the first time, the ring current and its effects on spacecraft with, with the RPI instrument looking at how the solar wind interacts with the magnetosphere will know more about how aurora are generated, substorms occurring, and potentially how power can be affected in these large magnetic storms that occur around solar maximum. Soon after image is deployed, the timed spacecraft will follow. Timed will study the area from 60 to 180 kilometers above Earth, 
the least understood region of our atmosphere. It will track the sun's influence and seasonal variations. Time Tool also help improve space weather predictions and provide a baseline against which to measure human influences on the atmosphere. It will also look at how solar flares affect satellite communications and the ionosphere. Studying flares themselves is the mission of the HESI spacecraft, also slated to launch during solar maximum. Mission Control, using a giant new antenna, will be out west at the University of California, Berkeley. As we've seen, flares, CMEs, and sunspots all derive their energy from the sun's magnetic field. And HESI's sensitive X-ray and gamma ray detectors will study them with finer resolution than ever before. Then HESI researchers will use data from SOHO, TRACE, and YOKO to relate their close-up X-ray images to physical structures on the sun, hoping finally to solve the mystery of how solar flares release so much energy so rapidly. With all these spacecraft and solar maximum, researchers should enjoy a golden age of astronomy in the coming years. And one contributing spacecraft will be a veteran traveler. The European NASA Ulysses mission was launched in 1990, but first had to travel out away from the Sun, its ultimate target, to mighty Jupiter to get a gravity assist to slingshot it up and out of the plane of the solar system high above the Sun's poles. Here, Ulysses gathered the first ever data about the solar wind above the Sun's poles. It found a fast solar wind, blowing constantly at nearly 800 kilometers a second, unlike the gentler and inconstant breezes closer to the equator. In 2001, for the first time, Ulysses will look down on the sun's poles during a period of solar maximum. Working in partnership with the similarly equipped ACE spacecraft, it will also help us understand the three-dimensional structure of CMEs. Through all these missions, astronomers will be able to live with a star in close-up, understanding our sun as a typical star, yet also appreciating its deep connection to our planet as never before. But one of our student participants